Hi, I'm Allie Ray, and welcome to Bcan Paul's. This is your weekly reminder to sit back, relax, and catch up on what's happening in the Glass City. We're visiting the museum and celebrating Wayne Tebow's 100th birthday with their latest exhibit. Get a mouth-watering bite with our food man, Tim McMahon, and getting inside the mind of local artist, Terry Burton. But first, let's take a look at the here and now of Northwest Ohio. We're headed to Hart Gallery and Studio for an interactive exhibit. Hart Gallery and the mission of St. Paul's Lutheran Church is a small hidden gem in downtown Toledo. They made the decision to turn some unused rooms in their building for community engagement. So one way to do that is through art. This month is an exhibit uh, produced by Sacred Threads. So the idea behind Sacred Threads was an opportunity for women to express their emotional journey. Woven Together is another project that we have at, at Heart Gallery. We have three large looms that are on wheels. The intention was that they would go outside of the church and while people are milling and waiting around, we're offering them an opportunity to weave and just share a little bit about how we are connected together in Toledo. We were excited to be a part of it. It was an opportunity for us to donate some shirts and also utilize them in a really fun way. Having the loom in our space, it's something that really stands out. Everybody that walks in sees it. And so visually, it's a really nice piece to have in our store. It's a lot of fun to have something that's interactive, to see people that are using it, to enjoy it. I think it makes people think of the different opportunities that people have to create art in their daily lives. The idea is that the looms can move around the Toledo area. As the pieces grow, then we'll take them off the loom. Then we have a story uh, of the people, where it was woven, and maybe some stories of the people that contributed to the weaving. It seems like a particularly good time in our history of our city and our country to be acknowledging that we are so diverse yet so woven together. Celebrating Tiger Bakery's 50th anniversary. It's just an amazing feeling. And actually, to be honest with you, it hasn't really hit us yet. 50 years is it's a really big thing. It really allows us to realize of how, you know, amazing the Toledo community is. Tiger Bakery offers uh, many amazing products from the Middle Eastern uh, region. Whenever a customer comes in, we make sure that you're coming out of our place with a smile, um, whether that's from the food or whether from that's from us. Everybody here is a family, so when you come in here, we treat you like a family. All our products are made with love. When we started in January of 2021, we partnered up with uh, Odd Fodder. We used our delicious homemade sweets, our chocolate baklava and almond baklava. The owner took that and made it into a shake. For February, we are partnering up with Berry Bagels. We're taking their everything bagel seasoning and putting it in our hummus. We are always looking for fun, creative things to do with food, um, especially when it takes taking different cultures or different flavors and putting them all together. And so we got a call out of the blue from Kareem from Tiger Bakery, and he said, hey, we're just gonna be our 50 years. We wanna do a smoke shake, and we thought of you guys. And I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. You know what, it's just awesome because they're a staple in this town. They've been here for 50 years and we're fairly new to the game here. So we was, it was really an honor to be asked to, to participate in this. Tiger Bakery is one of the most iconic and important small businesses in our city, but they're also uh, community minded. So the fact that they would reach out you know, to whomever, Barry's Bagels or whoever else, you know, this is really a win-win. Everything, everything about Tiger Bakery is good. Revving our engines for Jeep Fest 2021. You know, with, with the cancellation last year, there were a lot of people who were very disappointed. So 
This year, we have been met with anticipation, the excitement uh, beyond belief. Uh, we've got vendors calling us saying, hey, we want to participate. We wanted to come last year, we couldn't do it. This year, we want to be there. So we're excited. I think there's a, a pent up excitement from uh, our, our, our group. Our, clearly, our sponsors and vendors are excited. And I think we're looking forward to a good year. Clio has showed they like a good celebration around their hometown product, Jeep. 80 years of Jeep. This, is a, this will be a celebration that will be locally driven. Sure, we're looking for people to come in from other places. But this is our party, too. Um, we, we built the thing. Um, generations of people. I'm a retiree. I have people who retired before me. And people that are still working the plant all have, are bound by one family. And the community will be out doing that, I think, in August in force. Checking in with Sports Nightly. And let's take a look at our BK Player of the Week. Crawford had some very impressive numbers last week. She's on our top 30 BCSN list, by the way. She dropped 31 points in Central's overtime loss against Toledo Christian, 22 coming in the first half. And then the very next day, she followed it up with 21 points in their victory over the Springfield Blue Devils. A combined 52 points in just two games. Not a bad outing for the senior captain. Crawford says even though she was one of the the one with the hot hand last week, she couldn't have done it without her teammates. Um, well, just kind of in warm-ups, like getting focused and really just focusing on my shot, um, doing all the right things, game speed, everything, it all kind of plays into my game. And then once I hit a few, like in the game, I just kind of, you know, get confident with it. And then, um, you know, just with my teammates and stuff, you know, off the court and stuff cheering me on, it really helps as well. I mean, everyone really plays a big part in it. Um, you know, just coming up the floor, pushing the ball up the floor. Um, coach trusted me a lot, so that's really nice and that helps. Um, you know, all my players, you know, they also trusted me. And, you know, I, you know, I, I know, you know, what my role is and having to play that role. So I'm just doing everything for the team. Now that you know what's happening in Toledo, here's what's happening near you. Enjoy the tastes and sounds of New Orleans without leaving Toledo at the Mardi Gras Chef Table Dinner Series. Get a breathtaking view at the Toledo Zoo's rare and exotic orchid show. And celebrate the 10th annual Project PJ by donating bedtime comforts to the Seagate Food Bank. Stay tuned, there's more Pecan Pals headed your way after this short break. We are here in the Warehouse District at the new Firefly Restaurant. We're celebrating Valentine's Day with these festive cocktails and you can check them out for yourself when they open next week. Hello, my name is Randy and I'm Firefly's mixologist. Um, some good Valentine cocktails. Um, I would recommend a chocolate covered strawberry martini. Um, we have a cherry cordial old fashioned that's very unique. And if you just want something very classic, just like a glass, uh, glass of sparkly rosé, I'd recommend. Next cocktail that we're gonna make, um, you guys are gonna make with me. Um, it is our version of a lemon drop uh, martini, um, but today we're going to use tequila instead of vodka. So, um, go ahead and grab your glass. Okay. Break them things. <laughs> and then you're going to add um, your butterfly pea flower syrup. We're going to do two ounces of our tequila. That. Oh my gosh. There you go. Switch hands, my goodness. <laughs> Did he throw it this Jordan? I know. So what's this called? That's a jigger. Okay. Yep. And just measures everything. Yep. And... Yeah. Keeps all the drinks consistent across the board. So from here, we're going to add our ice to our glass, and then you're going to toss on the top. Make sure it's on there really good, and then you're gonna shake it up. Don't be afraid to shake it. <laughs> and then strain that into your, your martini glasses. From here, you just take your lemon juice and you're gonna pour it on top of your cocktail and it's going to change pink. And you just kind of just toss like a little peel in there. Really good. Oh, that is delicious. My partner and I uh, had done business in Vegas for years, and there was a spot in Vegas called Firefly. 
and we always liked the name, although it's not the same concept, and we're Firefly Toledo. Uh, we just always thought that, that Firefly vibe with the lit up tail and the blinking, and, the, and that's what we're about too, because on a Friday and Saturday night, you can come in here, we'll have a DJ in here, we'll have the lights, we'll have the sound, you can come in here and dance with your friends and have a good time. Allie, we're always looking for new places to check out, especially in downtown Toledo, and I have to say, I'm obsessed. I love that these drinks changed colors, as you saw. How fantastic is that? We need to dust off our dancing shoes, and I just can't wait to order one of these and come back. Welcome back to Bcan Pulse. We're headed to the Toledo Museum of Art's latest exhibit that includes bright colors, delicious treats, and celebrating Wayne Tebow's 100th birthday. Wayne is really playing with both and the still life form and these objects that are so familiar to us, whether um, it be a slice of pie or a candied apple. In this exhibition covers work from 1947 all the way up to 2019, which is a very long career. There's a wonderful interview in the exhibition with Wayne that was just uh, taken last year, so you really get a sense of kind of who he is still and how much vitality and energy he has left in him. There are some images actually of Wayne himself, so you get to kind of see who he is throughout his career. There's a lot of interesting information that's included in the exhibition about his, his the trajectory of his career and kind of the way he sees his um, subjects, so you get to be able to read a lot about him. Um, and then you'll be able to see this uh, kind of celebration of his birthday also, which is incorporated into a, a, a video at the very end. Um, we were really excited to celebrate uh, Wayne's 100th birthday with him uh, on November 15th, in, uh, 2020. One of the things that this exhibition really does is it, it presents us with this kind of joyful uh, depiction of everyday life. And Wayne really appreciated kind of the commonness of the American restaurant, the American diner, the food that we experience in there. Um, and he depicts food in a way that's really joyful, that's full of humor. Um, and it just, you know, it has wonderful life and energy to it. It's something that I think that we can really use right now, especially at a time that we're missing the experience of, of being in a restaurant and eating together. This exhibition opens on February 6th and it runs through May 2nd. Um, it's free for members. It's $10 for non-members. Um, and we also have some wonderful promotions through the exhibition for, um, for youth, for healthcare workers and first responders. Um, and I would just say, you know, this is such a great time to come and enjoy this beautiful exhibition that's full of color and light and pattern and just wonderful energy, kind of at a time when, you know, it's, it's winter, the skies are a little bit dark and gray, and you just kind of can come in and feast off of this luscious uh, painting that Wayne Tebow has brought to us and to here in Toledo. Plan your next visit to the Toledo Museum of Art before this exhibit is gone. We're now throwing it back to Poonchki Day with our food man, Tim McMahon. Allie, I love Poonchkis. I know you love them too. And I actually had the privilege of following Walt Churchill Market's head baker, Fred Bartnikowski, as he took me through his Poonchki making process in this 4-1 Nosh flashback. Fred, how long have you been making Poonchkis here? Uh, about 44, 45 years now. How long have you been making them today, I guess, leading up to Fat Tuesday? What's it like? What's the process like? Well, we started a couple weeks ago. We usually start about a month out from uh, Fat Tuesday. Uh, we're running, uh, we bake them for here and for the Briarfield store, so it keeps us busy. What's the difference between a punchki and like a jelly-filled donut? Punchki has more butter in it, more sugar, more eggs. 
and it's just a lot richer dough. What are the flavors? Anything you can imagine. <laughs> Anything you can put in there. We make it. Uh, the original flavors were apricot, raisin, prune, uh, but it's evolved into white whip, chocolate whip, Bavarian, mm -hmm. raspberry. I could go on and on, but we basically make anything a, a customer would want. We'll fill it for them. Today we have raspberry, Bavarian, and lemon. We got our Bavarian, which is like what when people say like you know their standard like cream. It's cream like a cream. custard. Mm -hmm. Custard, yes, yes, exactly. And then the lemon, which if you're not a lemon fan, it, it can be dangerous if you're trying to get the, the Bavarian cream because mm -hmm. lemon's right here. What's your favorite? Mine is the lemon. That's really good. Oh, thank you. That's a good mixture of flavor. That's fantastic. Always powdered sugar. Uh, no, we, we glaze some and then we, we will use granulated sugar at times. But the powder is by far the most popular. Oh, I'd, I'd imagine so. And like you said, the Bavarian is probably the best selling. It's my favorite. While I'm eating this, can you walk me through the process of how you prepare this? We make our punchkis the day before, mix them from scratch, chop them up on a bench in five pound pieces, round them up on our rounder, and uh, set them overnight in the cooler. Then our fryer comes in uh, approximately two in the morning and starts frying them, filling them, and basically goes all day. Our punchkis are never frozen. And then how do you get the filling in? We have an automatic filler. Mm -hmm. uh, some, we use that for some of the flavors we can, other ones we have to hand fill. Are you from this area? I uh, grew up around the Sylvania area. Were you always punchy fan growing up? Definitely, my mother used to make them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that where you learned how to do it? And got uh, it's where I got the original recipe, yes. And then mm -hmm. kind of through the years, we doctored it up a little bit to, uh, to what we like. What is the most common mispronunciation? Pachki. Pachki. People call them Pachki. Walt made a special request for us. He says you can pair wine with Poonchki. Yes, Walt's been talking so about mead wine as of lately. Says it's a good fit with Poonchki. We have some mead wine here. I, Let's give it a shot. I basically have never tried it. <laughs> so this is a first on camera for Fred with this mead and pairing of the Poonchki. What's the most popular time of day that you find you sell Poonchkis? Uh, between three and seven. Or is it just a madhouse on Fat Tuesday? Oh, that's an all-day thing, yes. <laughs> Get ready, huh? Mm -hmm. And go. how long will you have them after that? Thank you very much. No, I quit on Fat Tuesday. You're done? Yes. But will, when do you guys usually run out? Uh, usually about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll be running low on Punchki on Fat Tuesday. On Fat Tuesday? Mm -hmm. But do you have, like, if someone comes in the next day, will you have Punchki? No. You'll be out? Yes. So get out here. Mm -hmm. Get your poonchkis on Fat Tuesday, and maybe buy a mead. And cheers. Cheers. Try it with a glass of wine. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Oh. Start, you can't stop. <laughs> you can't. Don't wait until the last minute to order your favorite sweet treat this Tuesday. We're up against our last break, but stay tuned for more Beacon Pulse after this. Thanks for sticking right here on Beacon Pulse. We're diving deeper into the mind of local artist Terry Burton. You know, with art, there's a nuance to it where I think I can add something. Because not everything's just uh, black and white. I think provoking conversation, I think in a constructive way. Art is my lane. That's where I can serve the community the best. Hello, my name is Terry A. Burton. I'm a local artist and I own a company called Cloud Farming. The creative industries where, where I kind of like made a home career-wise. 20 years later, I'm here, back here, full circle, after going to uh, Cincinnati, Detroit, Cleveland. You know, I just got back from Detroit two years ago and kind of like coming back to uh, the basics where it all started for me. Usually with my process, I start out with a small drawing like this. Um, steal things out of the newspapers and clippings and stuff like that, and then I come up with something that um, 
is a, is authentic. I don't know, original is a strong word. You know, you know, a tree's a tree. There are many different trees, but this was the end like design. Um, and then I usually take that and I would project that onto a canvas for larger things. I mean, you know, you have to get the lines down. But from there, you know, you have to know what you're doing as far as I guess, you know, filling in color and stuff like that. It's almost like advanced paint by numbers. I'd say most of my work would be uh, collage in nature, but I do, I do draw. It's cumbersome to, to make an image, so I, I don't want to say cheat, but you know, I just take some shortcuts and liberties because I think you know, the most important for me is to get the message across. And um, definitely in this fast-paced world, um, you know, I use a computer a lot you know, to generate images. More so now than when I first started, um, the computer has been integral to what I'm doing. And so I'm balancing between analog and digital worlds when it comes to visual art. I will remix um, paintings that I've made, you know, like actual objects into digital art. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like a, a spectrum a pendulum that goes back and forth between the two. Always stay thirsty for uh, different, you know, acquiring skills or knowledge um, and, and to be able to use your creativity in different ways. And that, I guess maybe that's because I have a business background. I guess that's the way I think. You know, one of my favorite artists is Andy Warhol. I think he was a great business artist. He was always thinking about how to um, make a buck. For example, I, you know, I, I got into graphic design by accident because someone said, hey, you know, you, do you make logos? And I'm like, yeah, I could make a logo. Okay, I'm gonna pay you X amount of dollars. Regardless of whether you like it, you have to make a living. So just find something within the creative realm to apply, apply your creativity. And I could go into a room and make a interesting presentation um, for a client and have the skill set to do so. Um, and that leads me into, like I got into marketing. I think it all blends together for me as a, as a career. But not to just say, hey, I just do painting or I just do sculpture. Um, you know, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't seem 21st century. Keep a close eye on Terry's social media for his latest work. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this week's show. For more stories and extras, check us out on social media and give us a like. I'm Allie Ray, and you're up to date with BCAN Pulse.